It was the day a town named Maryville lost its innocence. The night a teen named Daisy Coleman wishes never happened. Daisy was only 14 at the time. 14. She was dumped outside, barely clothed, in sub-freezing temperatures. I was still fairly intoxicated from the night before, so I was not quite in my right mind, and I was still very incoherent. Now, Daisy finds herself in the emergency room, frostbitten, and nursing the mother of all hangovers. Her blood alcohol was still through the roof. It became very real at that point. Daisy's blood alcohol was 0.13. The ER doctor does a rape kit. Daisy's mom, Melinda, says the doctor told her Daisy had tears in her genital area. So he described the trauma to me and the tears. And I said, OK, I, I know what that means, but I'm going to need for you to say it to me because I'm so stressed out. She worries, was Daisy sexually assaulted by the popular football player? Was this kid really that popular? Honestly, he wasn't that great of a football player, but he was a popular senior boy who, you know, a lot of people kind of looked up to. People didn't want to believe that someone that they glorified is capable of, you know, human action and doing something so terrible. Hours later, the sheriff brings in Barnett for questioning. The detective seems rather laid back during the interrogation. Did she drink some at your house? Yeah, well, yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, that's cool, okay, yeah, that's cool. Then the football player throws a bombshell. He admits that he and Daisy had sex, but he claims it was consensual. Then you took her home, you and her talked, you had sex. Yeah. Then she came out after having sex, wanted to have another shot. Yeah. Barnett goes into chilling detail, explaining why he and his friends abandoned Daisy in 20 degree weather. We brought her over. Side of her house with with her friends mm -hmm. in case they don't want to get caught, and they said they snuck out. She sobered up a little bit, so they're gonna sit out there for a while, and I went back home. It was then revealed that one of the boys in the basement videotaped Daisy's assault. It was taken from behind the door by one of the guys that I would have considered one of my best friends. But that video was reportedly deleted any alleged proof gone. The sheriff charged the then 17-year-old with felony sexual assault and misdemeanor child endangerment. It took all of me not to sit there and text him or show up at his house and try to beat the crap out of him. Justice would need to handle the revenge, but not before Daisy faced yet another crushing assault. People in Maryville began taking sides, and Daisy says her friends turned on her. I felt like my life had immediately taken a 180 because I no longer wanted to go to school at Maryville. I felt like I lost my whole group of friends and I just felt like I wanted to run away and go to a different place where no one knew me so I could restart again. Melinda says some of the boys at school then made threats on social media to beat up her two sons. And she claims when she went to the sheriff's department for help, they threatened her. Well, I called the sheriff and you know, to get someone, and I showed them the stuff on Twitter and Facebook where they had planned it. There was a captain at the sheriff's office that came over to the house the next day and threatened me. And he told me to stay off social media. Crime Watch Daily reached out to the current sheriff of Nottoway County, Randy Strong. In a statement, he says the individuals involved in the Coleman investigation resigned prior to my first day in office. During the investigation, the prosecutor questioned Daisy in a criminal deposition, and you'll be shocked when you hear what she says happened. My prosecutor came out into the hallway and he just looked at me and said, Daisy, and didn't even treat me like a human being. And then once I got into the room, he actually read me my Miranda rights, and I felt like I was being treated like the perpetrator, like I wasn't the survivor. You heard right. She says they read her Miranda rights like she was a potential perpetrator, not the victim. The same thing happened to Elizabeth, too, after her chilling nine-month ordeal. Cops questioned her, asking why she didn't escape when she had the chance. And I remember, for me, that was so frustrating. And then to hear about what you're going through, not even being treated like, like a person, being treated like you're the perpetrator, 
It must have been so infuriating. It was really frustrating. I remember breaking down and crying at least three times during the deposition. In the deposition obtained by our Kansas City affiliate WDAF, Daisy admitted it's possible that she could have promised Barnett sexual favors if he gave her alcohol. That was enough for the prosecutor to drop the sexual assault charge against Barnett. Interestingly, the boy who had admitted he had sex with Daisy's girlfriend that night was convicted in juvenile court. But would there ever be justice for Daisy? Next, Daisy gets support from a surprising anonymous source. We demand an immediate investigation. And how a documentary sheds new light on the investigation. Matt was definitely politically connected. His uh, dad had served as a sheriff and his grandpa was a pretty powerful name in the area. 